Hello everybody, my name is Jonathan Van Kim. I am a senior solutions architect uh, specializing in security and identity. Uh, I work for AWS. Thank you everybody for coming. Uh, I know we're only a few hours away from the founders party. So we'll, well, uh, it's just a few more sessions and uh, you can enjoy the party. Uh, I have on stage here with me is Chris. He's gonna take over for part of the uh, presentation. So I'll hand over the uh, clicker to him when it becomes his turn. So in this particular uh, session here, we're here to talk about a customer that has been working with us here at AWS for quite some time now. Uh, and the particular use case we're gonna talk about is how Behavox is an AI ML company, scales workforce identities on AWS. So a quick overview, and here's the agenda that we're gonna cover. So we're gonna talk a little about uh, Behavox themselves, what they do. Uh, we're gonna look at what their situation is, what some of the objectives they were looking for opportunities with AWS identity, and we're gonna go over their kind of like the over, uh, architectural solution and just a little bit about uh, what Behavox and AWS will be doing. So let's go behind the company. So Behavox, who is Behavox? Behavox is a SaaS provider. Uh, Behavox provides a suite of security protocols, uh, products uh, that help compliance, that help HR, and security teams protect their company and colleagues from bad actors. Through AI-powered uh, analysis of corporate communications, including uh, uh, email, instant messaging, voice, and video conferencing uh, platforms, Behavox helps organizations identify illegal, immoral, and malicious behavior in the workspace. So they're founded in about 2014. Uh, they're headquartered in Montreal, um, has offices in New York City, London, San Francisco, Seattle, Singapore, Tokyo, Dallas, and Abu Dhabi. So quite a, quite a presence around the world in, all, in quite a few of the major cities. So let's talk a little bit about their, their, their business and their tech. Behavox uses, as I mentioned, artificial intelligence solution to analyze corporate communications data. So they're looking for, as mentioned before, uh, moral, uh, illegal and malicious behavior, and this is their the intent is to protect the digital headquarters for their various customers. Well, who are those, some of those customers that they protect? So uh, they, this is a global company that serves to, mostly serves financial institutions across multiple verticals, including investment banks, asset managers, hedge funds, wealth funds, pretty much institutions with, uh, with money being the, the primary source of their, uh, <laughs> the primary source of their income. Quantum, is one of their products, is an AI execution engine helping to consistently perform 3,000 times better than a lexicon-driven product. In other words, they're using AI instead of using a dictionary and looking for keywords and then and being able to figure out what are the, uh, the intent is. So AI, being able to figure out the context is a much more accurate and much better uh, solution in terms of finding uh, true positives and reducing the number of false negatives. Sorry, false positives. They were able to identify fraud and bad actors through various online mediums. Uh, so I'll just give you a few of those that they do are, which they are for sure compatible with is Zoom, uh, Slack, email, and then of course, because they're a multinational company, they support multiple languages as well. So in 2015, Behavox started off in AWS. So they started in 2014, and only a year later, they started to jump into AWS. And they are an amazingly powerful AI, they have amazingly powerful AI uh, ML capabilities. So uh, like most customers who start off fresh on AWS, uh, especially in the 2015 timeframe, they use standalone AWS accounts. And it provided, and it provided a natural security boundary. Um, they, uh, at the time, they created one account for every customer. So if one new account, one, they, as they onboard a new customer, they would uh, basically create a brand new account and that was the natural security boundary and also provide a natural billing uh, construct so you know, they knew exactly how much the, the, that particular customer cost them. 2018, because of their growth and they were getting so much bigger and they were having so many standalone accounts, they started to deep, uh, dive deep into how security operations should really look like. So it was time to evolve security and look at the latest secure, uh, AWS security feature, uh, services and features in order to help them move forward and grow faster. As Behavox started to rapidly uh, expand its customer base, its security teams commenced a strategic upgrade of the company's security infrastructure stack uh, to continue to effectively protect its customers using scalable, robust, and commercially sensible security guardrails. 
security controls. In particular, uh, because there's so many standalone accounts, they need to centralize uh, and centralize manage all of this. So they looked at securely designing a multi-account uh, solution to manage the number, uh, the growing number of AWS accounts hosting its uh, SaaS software. So uh, remember I mentioned one account for every customer. So as they continue to grow their customers, uh, there's going to get into to a very large amount. It's very difficult to manage. So to deliver on this, uh, to deliver on this unified, high visibility environment that it required. Uh, Behavox built it on AWS organizations, which companies can use, certainly use, uh, which they can essentially manage and govern uh, their environments as they continue to grow into AWS. Organizations, along with identity services, such as AWS SSO, uh, lets them manage users' identities, manage identities, resources, and permissions securely at scale. Behavox centralized and enhanced their security posture and optimized speed to market and facilitated its ongoing growth. So we can see here the three different, uh, three different aspects here. We have the first one is essentially manage, and the second one is being able to enforce um, and audit and provide some sort of single sign-on sign sign -on process. So really quickly, why would you use a multi-account AWS? So in general, it applies to, all AWS, to almost all customers in AWS. A multi-account strategy has a lot of benefits, which includes organizing uh, all your accounts into a central location, allows you to deploy security guardrails and provides centralized user management. Behavox began using the solutions, as mentioned, in 2015 because they were obsessed with customer privacy, security, and peace of mind were key. And the company chose to deploy each customer into a dedicated AWS account, which serves as, a, you know, as I mentioned before, a logical resource boundary for security access and billing purposes. Over time, most Behavox customers sought to take advantage of the high availability, scalability, and security of AWS by choosing to deploy on Behavox's AWS-powered software uh, as a service solution. As they continue to grow, Behavox themselves found maintaining an increasing number of accounts uh, being unwieldable, and they wanted to be able to continue to they wanted to be able to respond to the growing complexity of its operations. In 2018, uh, they embarked on their uh, on an effort to build a com comprehensive security operations layer and use existing AWS infrastructure to be able to manage this. Behavox adopted organizations and Control Tower together to help centralize account management, ef enable effective multi-accounts governance, and provide mechanism for managing uh, security and services, uh, security and service control policies across the organizations, which provide preventative guardrails that manage permissions for the organizations. So just a recap on their multi-account strategy. Um, they use uh, grouped workloads into multiple containers. In this case, the container is an account for logical separation, some sort of categorization, and be able to provide that security boundary for each of their customers. They constructed an organizational grouping to meet their business needs. In, this, in other words, they're using organizational units to help group these together. And because they're using organizations and control tower, they're enabling advanced governance and management capabilities across their environment. Here's a quote from uh, head of security at Behavox. Using AWS organizations was the right choice. And by adding AWS control tower, we had a structure that delivers security by design. So uh, we're gonna next talk about identity and access management. I wanna hand this over to Chris. All right, so uh, like Jonathan mentioned, my name is Chris Mercer. I'm a security specialist solutions architect with AWS and I focus on identity and access management. So Jonathan talked a lot about who Behavox was and kind of what they wanted to do in the direction they wanted to go. I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper and see exactly how they did that. So they figured out how to do a multi-account architecture and we're using AWS organizations to kind of manage all these. But we wanted to figure out with all these customers and all these developers, how do we get in and actually do things in AWS and how do we manage that identity at scale? So one of the first things that they did is they enabled AWS single sign-on. Uh, AWS single sign-on serves as a single place to manage your identities and access inside of AWS. And it allows you to connect your corporate identities into, uh, into AWS. So your corporate identities, uh, your Azure AD, your Okta, your um, other identity providers, uh, G Suite, uh, which Behaviox used, we'll talk about that in just a second. 
they can serve as your source of truth. You've already got identities. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. And so you can use those to enable access via uh, AWS Single Sign-On into AWS. And then it allows you to manage those permissions centrally. So this is kind of how the architecture looks. Uh, Behemox used uh, G Suite as their identity provider for other things within their organization. And so it made sense to use that for AWS as well. So G Suite uh, synced up users and groups to AWS Single Sign-On. And inside of AWS Single Sign-On, you can manage the AWS accounts and permission sets to determine who has access to what and what they can do inside of AWS. Uh, there was uh, another quote from their head of security that said that having that effective identity management solution helps us to enforce security policies across all systems, environments, and applications. He said, as they embarked on, our, on their journey to becoming a SOC 2 compliant business while rapidly growing their customer base, using AWS Single Sign-On was the right way to manage and monitor access to our AWS accounts. Now, there was one little hiccup in this process in that uh, G Suite doesn't quite uh, support the native um, Skim solution. I'll talk about Skim in just a second that AWS supports. So Skim is a protocol that's used to sync users and groups from an identity provider into another application or into another identity provider. This is a protocol that AWS Single Sign-On supports natively. And it's a great way to manage your users and groups in AWS Single Sign-On and not have to recreate them or duplicate that kind of work. Well, because G Suite doesn't natively support our implementation of Skim, uh, Behavox, being a company of builders, developed a solution for this and sought out a solution where they took a uh, open source tool called SSO Sync. Uh, this is a tool that's available out there on GitHub. And they modified it for their use so that these scripts would run and use the skim endpoint in AWS Single Sign-On to sync these users and groups when they wanted it to happen. So they're still using skim, they're still using this common protocol, and they're syncing these users and groups into AWS Single Sign-On very quickly and easily with an automated fashion while still being able to use G Suite to manage their identities. So let's take a quick look at how they integrated this identity solution, how they integrated this process into their broader security program. Uh, like Jonathan mentioned, it's not just about the identities. Identity is just a small part of that whole security construct. One of the services that uh, Behavox really focused on using is they wanted to build a SIM uh, infrastructure, a SIM solution that was based on open search. And in order to do that, they needed to get information about what was going on in AWS. Once they've identified their users and once they have people in AWS, they need to know what's going on. So they use Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose to pull this off. Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose allows them to capture and ingest logs of what's going on in their environment, what users are doing. And these sources helped uh, them see what's going on and monitor this activity, both inside and outside of AWS. Additionally, they wanted to monitor the environment for anything that looked out of the ordinary or looked like a potential threat. So they use Amazon, they looked at Amazon Guard Duty for this. Amazon Guard Duty is a threat detection service that continuously monitors a company's AWS accounts and workloads, network traffic for malicious activity. They were able to deploy this solution, deploy it, test it, and get it operational in less than two months across all of their AWS accounts, which if any of you have tried to implement a threat detection tool, that is no small feat. But Amazon GoDuty makes that pretty easy. It is actually, it's additionally, it is integrated with AWS organizations so that you can manage it centrally. You can deploy this across all of your accounts, as Behavox did, from a central management plane, from a central account, and manage it from there so that people in those other accounts can't go and change that configuration and go and turn it off. The head of security said that, um, they said that Amazon Guard Duty became a valuable addition 
to their security systems portfolio, generating a return on investment from day one and helping keep their customers protected. So let's look at kind of the flexibility and the interoperability with the things that they did and how they did it on AWS. For that, I hand it back to Jonathan. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. So, um, so when looking at, uh, when working with Behaviox, we looked at this from a very, a very large and holistic standpoint. So here are kind of the six pillars that we worked on. So Behaviox looked at security identity and compliance as a whole and worked with the, and we worked with them to come up with the best architecture to help them grow and meet their business needs uh, today and also in the future. As their continue, their fast growth is amazing and at the rate in which they're building out one a standalone account for every customer, they were certainly going to have a they were certainly having a difficult uh, situation where we wouldn't we these these tools and these uh, these pillars is what we focused on to help them grow and be and build a solid security foundation. So in order to help them, uh, in order for for us to help them and all and. And even in AWS, we, uh, we have a lot of security partners and solutions that we, would, we use to help Behavox get to where they are today. In this particular case, we're gonna, here's, a, here's a three different uh, areas in which our, we have some partners out there that we work with. Uh, we have network and infrastructure security, we have vulnerability configuration management, and we also have logging, monitoring, SIM, and threat detection analysis. And these are the various partners that we do partner with. This is not inclusive. There's a lot more than these, but these are the ones that we have here on our slide. So Behaviox is a SaaS uh, solution powered by AWS, and we help them by going. Through, and these are some of the key. Uh, these are some of the key uh, AWS services that we use with them, which include AWS Single Sign-On, uh, AWS IAM, Guard Duty, Kinesis Firehose. We should also include in there talk about Control Tower and AWS organizations. It's a combination of these key services that help Behaviox grow and support uh, an, ide uh, an identity uh, solution that supports over 100,000 users today, and it continues to grow, and be able to use this with G Suite. So having said that, thank you very much for attending our session and listening to our story of Behavox. Uh, if you don't mind, if, uh, please uh, take a scan of this. This is a Qualtrics uh, survey. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, we also, for those who are, are still in the room, we also have Kevin over here who has multiple boxes of uh, Cognito t-shirts who, if you're, if you're interested, please come see him and he'll, he'll give those out to you. Um, and thank you very much. If you have any questions for me or Chris, feel free to you know, ask them now or we'll walk, downstairs, we'll walk off the stage and talk to you directly. If you're interested in meeting Behavox, just let us know and we'll, help our, we'll help see if we can help arrange that meeting. Thank you very much. We does anybody have any questions now that they want to address real quick? Yes, sir. So the question, correct me if I'm wrong, is that uh, for Behavox, their customers are other organizations? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, so, so Behavox works with other organizations. Uh, and so those other organizations are customers of Behavox, and then Behavox is a customer of AWS. So they, Behavox runs their program and runs their tooling yeah. on AWS, and these tools help them do that securely. So the question is for identity and access management, is it one group of IAM or is it lots of different ones? So with, uh, with AWS single sign-on, it allows them to manage that centrally where they have one centralized identity and access management tool that allows access into their organization. And uh, the primary people that are logging on to that is the businesses that are working with Behavox. So, the customers of those businesses don't log directly on through that method. It's their customers and their developers and things at all that use that. Does that, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, I think most of them just say for the customer, they also need the uh, IAM or they are totally centralized. Imagine the centralized, I just try to understand and say, if I'm the customer, I'm the account, I also need to treat the users, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so they're, they're all centralized with single sign-on. If you like, I can follow up with you afterwards as well, and we can talk a little bit deeper on it. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so uh, Behavox uses uh, both guardrails and permissions to manage access and security inside of AWS. Uh, when we're talking about permissions, we're talking about what users are allowed to do, um, what they can do, what they can't do, They're the permissions policies. Uh, these are often controlled inside of the permission sets in AWS single sign-on. A lot of organizations, Behavox included, also use guardrails, which are uh, sometimes included in the policies themselves and sometimes at a higher level, like across the organization. And those guardrails help make sure that even if somebody were to have some kind of excessive permissions or try to execute something that they weren't allowed to do, those guardrails kind of prevent that from happening and keep them uh, going in the right direction while not really inhibiting their, their daily work. Anything to add to that? No? no. Very well. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Did, uh, do you know if they use a single GC tenant to see how well their customer accounts and users took off the user organization? Yeah, so they, uh, we're, not, uh, we're not entirely allowed to go too much in detail of that, so we, we were just allowed to say G Suite and uh, so on. Well, what I can tell you is that uh, AWS Single Sign-On supports one single source of truth as an identity management solution. Uh, so while I can't go, well, we can't go too deep into how they have that piece configured, uh, what I can say is that it's, it's very easy to get all of that into Single Sign-On without having to do a bunch of extra configuration. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Just to clarify, are you saying that the 100,000 users were basically customer accounts, not enterprise identities? Is that what I understood? John, you want to take that? Yeah, so we're, in this particular case, these are customer identities, but they're using it through a workforce identity solution today. So that's why they're over, this company's not super large, but their customers are going through SSO to get access to their resources. Okay. Thank you guys. Um, we'll, be, we'll be right here if you want to ask any follow-up questions. Uh, and thank you for your time. Appreciate it.